It's time for another top five video, and today we're going to discuss the top five most important guitar building woods. Hey everybody, this is Matt, and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Actually, we are at my house, and today I'm going to be doing another top five list. Um, I have selected what I believe are the top five most important guitar building woods for, uh, for solid body electric guitars, um, semi hollow body electric guitars, acoustic guitars, etc. Now, I realize that my list might be different from your list, and I encourage you to leave me your list in the comment section below. If you want to fight me on my list, that's great. If you just want to tell me some woods that you think I should have included in the top five list, that's great too. But I want you to know something. I worked long and hard on this top five list, and, um, uh, and, and one of them is the wood that if you only had one wood to build guitars with for the rest of your life, it might be a good idea to choose this one. But anyway, uh, let's dive right in with number five, and that is in fact Swamp Ash. Now, if you want a traditional guitar building wood for solid body uh, electric guitars, uh, Swamp Ash is a great place to start. Now, this is not to be confused with what I like to call baseball bat ash or northern hard ash. Now, the term Swamp Ash doesn't refer to any particular species of, of ash, but it, do, it is something that uh, guitar builders uh, kind of informally refer to um, when they're discussing the less dense or softer ash uh, normally found in the southern United States. So uh, the lighter and less dense uh, versions, or swamp ash, if you will, um, are great for guitar building. They, um, they machine beautifully. Uh, the, um, uh, for example, on the pin router, it just turns to this powder that uh, uh, it, it's easy to sweep up. It's easy to vacuum. Uh, sand's really great. Now, it is still an open grain wood, so things like comfort contours, it's very easy to get like some, uh, some, kind, of, some kind of bumpies where you have the hard hard outer grain and the, and the softer interior stuff, but, uh, but Swamp Ash is a terrific, terrific wood to use. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're building uh, any Fender style instrument, uh, you can't go wrong with Swamp Ash, especially if you're going to be doing a translucent finish. Now I have seen one acoustic guitar built with ash back and sides. My sample size is one, and it looked like a million bucks. Now it probably wasn't Swamp Ash, it was probably uh, uh, regular northern hard ash. Um, one of the, like I said, looked like a hundred million bucks. Any translucent uh, finish on ash looks great. Um, one of the, the downsides to, uh, to swamp ash is it's getting trickier and trickier to, to come by. Um, uh, it's available in wide pieces, so you could do, you could easily find a, um, uh, like a one-piece Telecaster size swamp ash body, um, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, it's getting uh, it's getting easier to find uh, like three piece bodies and four piece bodies. If you call Dan and Calvin at Tonewood Experts, um, uh, they they can hook you up with uh, three piece or four piece bodies, and of course two piece and maybe even some one piece bodies as well. Um, Swamp Ash is a little more expensive than the next wood on our list, and we're going to get to that one right now. So if I keep doing these top five lists, I'm going to reserve the number four spot for kind of a controversial pick. My number four pick for the most important guitar building woods is, in fact, poplar. Poplar is a terrific paint grade wood. It grows reasonably fast. Um, it grows reasonably, reasonably big. So, uh, so finding thick pieces in um, uh, eight quarter and even 12 quarter is pretty easy to do with poplar. Uh, it's reasonably inexpensive, and that's one of the reasons I think that poplar gets a bad rap. Uh, another reason that poplar gets a bad rap is because it isn't alder. Now, for my money, uh, uh, that it's not alder is a good thing. Um, I hate working with alder. Uh, I shouldn't say I hate it. I would much rather work with poplar than I would with alder. Alder has a tendency to check on the end grain, and, uh, and sourcing alder for me is easy if I don't mind getting a bunch of knots in it. Poplar, on the other hand, is uh, easy to find, nice and clear. Um, like I said, it is a paint grade lumber. Um, uh, it's got these green kind of streaks in it, 
And uh, if you're going to paint it, I think poplar is a terrific, terrific choice. Now, if you want to use poplar but you don't like the green stuff, Steve over at Maximum Guitar Works sent me an example of a torrified piece of poplar, which is super cool, and an even chocolatey brown. All the green streaks went away, and it's crazy light. And because it's been roasted, torrified, it's mega, mega dry. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that if you guys see torrified poplar uh, out and about, you'll stop thinking of it as, one, a paint grade would, and two, something not to be used because it's poplar. It's really cool. One of the other reasons that I chose poplar was because Randy Rhodes, uh, the, the, you know, the Ozzy Osbourne's guitar player, um, uh, rest in peace, Randy Rhodes, he had a famous polka dot flying V that actually had a poplar neck. Uh, the reason it had a poplar neck was the guy who built it, and you can look this up, don't take my word for it, the guy who built it actually had a Dan Electro neck that he grafted the, uh, that sort of fish hook um, headstock onto, and he, he added the propeller inlay things where the dots were, but, uh, but one of Randy Rhodes' um, uh, most, most iconic signature instruments, the original one at least, had a poplar neck. Okay, moving away from a controversial pick, I'm going to move to kind of a cheater pick. And for number three, I chose Rosewood. So Rosewood is kind of a cheat because there's so many different kinds of Rosewood. Uh, it's easy to get them mixed up and it's easy to kind of say, well, yeah, it's just Rosewood. Um, uh, but it's my list and you can come up with your own top five list and you can do whatever you want. But for my top five list, I cheated for number three, slot and chose rosewood. Rosewood is not particularly fun to work with. It stings the nostrils and it causes an incredible allergic reaction, at least for me. It can be tricky to glue up and finish because it's got so much oil in it. So sometimes spraying, um, spraying a, a hard finish on it, it, it tends to, to stay sticky because the oils react with the finish. Uh, gluing it up to uh, like rosewood to a maple or rosewood some rosewood to maple or, or, or mahogany next um, is tricky because again it's got so much oil in it. I've never had any problems uh, with the rosewoods that we get um, but I hear that sometimes you need to use a special adhesive when you're dealing with some rosewoods or rather it's not a bad idea to use a special adhesive. Some rosewoods are um, to put it lightly, cost prohibitive, and another way to put it is they're even on the endangered species list. So the more I think about it, the more I think rosewood's kind of a pain in the ass, but it's a traditional guitar building wood. I'm a traditional guy. It's cool. I'm cool. So I chose rosewood as my number three spot. So there's lots and lots of rosewoods to choose from, as I alluded to. There's Brazilian rosewood, Indian rosewood, Amazon rosewood, Madagascar rosewood, Cocobolo, Kingwood, Honduran Rosewood, and the list goes on and on. I like to lump all of these woods into the oily brown woods that are excellent for fretboards. Whether you're using Brazilian Rosewood or Black Poison Wood, it's all a kind of rosewood and it all makes an awesome, awesome fretboard. I think that Rosewood also makes an excellent neck. Uh, we recently did a video where we had a uh, custom P-Bass build that had an all Rosewood neck. One of my favorite guitars ever that I've ever owned had an all rosewood neck. It's really, really excellent. Now, like I say, there are some downsides, cost and toxicity and sensitivity, but rosewood is number three, and maybe it should have even been higher than number three, but I think you're gonna agree, my number two and number one spots are there for a reason. All right, number two, maple. Now, <laughs> maple's probably the most versatile wood on my list. And it probably should have been number one, except for I have a very soft spot in my heart for my number one pick um, because maple is a little harder to machine than my number one pick. Of course, maple can be used to make bodies, necks, fretboards. Uh, it comes in varying densities uh, from super, super hard to reasonably soft. You can get it in a plain grain or you can get it in a wildly exotic figured grain like flame maple or curly maple or quilted maple or bird's eye maple. And it ranges in cost from pretty, pretty cost effective and pretty affordable to wildly expensive. You can spend lots and lots and lots of money on maple. It can be expensive, but it is grown right here in the good old US of A. Like I alluded to before, if you had 
one lumber that you had to pick to build guitars with for the rest of your life, you could do a hell of a lot worse than maple. All right, time for my number one pick, and it's the absolute undisputed champion of guitar building woods, and that is in fact genuine mahogany. Just about every manufacturer has used it, is using it, etc., etc. Now, um, don't be confused with the uh, the African uh, mahoganies, which are awesome, but almost more akin to cedar than the actual genuine mahogany is. Um, Honduran mahogany or genuine mahogany, whatever you want to call it, it's the king. It's the benchmark for uh, for tone wood. It's the benchmark for stability. It's got a super cool, uh, even color. It finishes like a dream. It sands beautifully. It takes finish great. It looks like a hundred million bucks. It's awesome. And it can be used for acoustics and solid bodies alike. Classical guitars, steel string guitars, electric guitars, semi hollow body guitars, you name it, mahogany rules. Now there is one downside and that's primarily due to deforestation. Um, mahogany, uh, genuine mahogany at least, has not always been harvested uh, the most responsibly and, uh, and so prices have gone, have gone up. Um, expect to pay about double what you would for African mahogany, which like I said, can be super awesome, but uh, not as good as the genuine article. Okay guys, so there you have it. My top five list for uh, the most important guitar woods of all time. Like I said, I'd like to know what your top five list is, and uh, or maybe if you want to uh, see if you can urge me to change my list, change my mind on my top five guitar woods, if you will. I hope that you like the video. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do so, because as you know, it's the best way for YouTube channels to uh, uh, kind of be in on that algorithm from the YouTube bots. If you appreciate what I do here and you want to help me out financially, I would urge you to go over to our Patreon page and become a member, or you can sign up right here on YouTube. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping me bring you guys cool stuff like this. Now, of course, if you can't do it, I totally understand. Just share the video, like the video, etc., etc., and uh, and tune in next time when we'll maybe even have another top five list. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a top five fight with uh, Chris or top five fight with Ike from Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. Uh, but until then, this is Matt from Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, pick your own top five list and start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. I wanna play my guitar, the only